In the last few days, there's been some very interesting news in the world of science regarding a uh, Wi-Fi signal that was sent at two and a half terabits per second. That's basically seven Blu-ray movies per second. That's a lot. But the really interesting part is they did it with something called vortex beams. Well, vortex waves anyway. Uh, this involves something known as orbital angular momentum. And that's a very interesting aspect of light that has, has been, um, been severely underappreciated. Now, they've done it in optics for three or four decades, something called the Legrier Gaussian beams, um, primarily for lasers. Uh, in the last uh, couple of years, a guy by the name of Bo Thide at the Swedish Space Institute, I bet you didn't know they even had one, it's awesome, they don't get ships off, off to space, but hey, we don't either. Um, he was able to do it with radio waves. Of course, you guys remember, radio waves are one end of the spectrum, and all the way at the other end of the spectrum, you got your x-rays. In here, you got visible. And right here, over here, you got microwaves. Microwaves. Microwaves are important because that's where all your cell phone signals come from. And that little bit of patch of uh, electromagnetic spectrum is crowded. You need a lot more room here because everybody wants to use their cell phones. They're little cell phones. We all have to have them. So, what are we going to do? Well, here's what we're going to do. Science. So, the cool thing, what Mr. Thide did, is he realized that you could do it with radio waves by setting up a correct signal. By using the proper antennas in proper sync, you could, uh, we, we could make this. And his idea would work up to about 30 megahertz. Now I think this, um, I'm sure he'd work in other ideas that will also, as, as also this Wi-Fi group shows, that will work in the, in the microwave range. So what's interesting about this? Okay, so right now, here's our radio spectrum. We can distinguish stations by frequency. Frequency. But, you know, there's only so many stations you can put in here. You can crowd them in tighter, tinier, and tinier in all little hidden spaces, get a few more in there. It's only so much crowding you can do. What if you'd like a different band? Virgin territory. Like, like conquering the West. Oklahoma of Land Rush. You can put a whole bunch more. Oh, another one. And another one. And another one. To infinity. Yeah. Oh. This way, too. Why? How can we do this? Well, because this way we can also change what we call the ang orbital angular momentum of the wave. What is this? It is a different way to separate light beams. Light waves, radio waves, microwaves, all, all, all the electromagnetic spectrum. It's all waves. But, it's a, but the, the, what I'm saying is that we can tell, we can tell different waves by different frequencies. And you listen to one station, you don't like the music, change to a different station. You're just changing it to a different frequency. Well, you can also distinguish it by the orbital angular momentum. Okay, every wave has, every bit of light has, two characteristics. We have frequency. And, of course, right, right along with that, we have wavelength and energy. But those are all going to work out to be... This, all, this is all the same concept. Not the same concept. The same... It boils down to being... It, 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 if we can distinguish it by frequency, it's the same thing as distinguishing it by wavelength or energy. It doesn't tell us any more information. But... We could also take our little photons, they aren't really balls, but you know, give them a little spin, a little kick, and a, more or less, that's a little inaccurate, but a nice visual picture. And we can distinguish them this way, where a regular radio wave looks like, a regular photon, because this looks like this. It goes up, it goes down. 
And of course, it acts actually rotating as well. And there's an equal amount going backwards and forwards, and we say it's either vertically polarized, just going up and down, or it's just going left and right. It's horizontally repolarized. This is old hat. We've been doing this for ages. You guys can polarize sunglasses at the dollar store. Um, okay. Now we know this. But, I guess we can make waves that are more complicated too. Now imagine a wave like this, except it's rotating as well. Two wavelengths. Or, that would be one. Or we could have, this would be L equals two. Okay, so the waves would look like, which I should have drawn this more correctly, coming up like this. Okay, you guys see that? Yeah. Or, notice it. And once again, yeah, so L equals 2, L equals 3. Go rinse and repeat. And we have four. So we and so forth. You guys can do this in your spare time. It's not greatly complicated. Want more details? Look at the derivation for the Laguerre Gaussian beam. I think I'll make a video on that later. Not immediately, but soon. So. Okay, so I can distinguish this from that and from that. Which means, if I build the right kind of antenna, build the right kind of antenna, I can send radio stations on here, which I won't hear if I listen on this band, or if I listen on this band. So, Alan, this isn't even beginning. I mean, this is, I think the communications is the aspect that's going to make the biggest difference right now. But there are, of course, many other several ways. Atmospheric and astrophysics make a huge difference. Um, I mean, we don't know what we can detect yet. One of the big things they're looking at is black holes. But not just any black holes, weird ones called care black holes. These ones are fun because this funny things to the event horizon when it spins. Weird things. And in science we love weird things. Well, it may also be um, possible to do special things with MRI. This, is, this excites me. Right now, MRI is almost always done with hydrogen. Well, it's kind of the gold standard. It's just what works. Gives us the best signal. But we might be able to do sodium MRI. And the fun about thing about sodium MRI, that's a symbol for sodium, is that we can detect different things. You see totally different things when you do sodium MRI. Tumors, strokes, anything with an imbalance of sodium stands out like a sore thumb. There's a potential for a lot of awesomeness here. Also, optical tweezers and microscopic uh, nano, nano machinery. Uh, we don't know what it could do there, but we, we do know that it has been used in optical tweezers to uh, move atoms around and such. So there's some real potential there. But still, the biggest aspect, at least for the immediate future, is going to be radio and the microwave spectrum. So I'm going to start working on the radio spectrum because things are just a little bit simpler there. And if we can figure it out for the radio spectrum, then it's just a matter of working it out for the microwave. It's a small jump. But that's what we're looking at. Now, almost everything is done with light. Let me clarify. There are four fundamental forces. Four. The two nuclear forces, who cares about? We almost, nuclear almost never does anything with us. Gravity, well, it's useful for keeping our feet on the floor and not much else. Electromagnetic. Everything else is electromagnetic. Light, waves, electromagnetic waves, 
radio x-rays um, light obviously of course electric electric magnetic magnetic fields of course electricity useful for running things like computers uh, let's see Elect chemistry yeah that's a big one because it's all electric electrons which is all electric fields so and for a long time pretty much everything we've done with light has been involving just frequency. Now we've dipped into this a little bit. Rather, we've dipped into spin. You guys may have heard of that. I'm going to explain more about this later. Um, but I'll simply say this. Two kinds of angular momentum. You have the orbital angular momentum and you have spin. Two kinds. But there is huge potential here, and we are just barely beginning to get an idea of what's out there. It's the frontier, folks. Enjoy it.